Hey y'all, it's West Virginia History with Mrs. B, and uh, we're coming to you with a new um, subset of series that are going to be called West Virginia Weekend Road Trips, where we give recommendations of places to stay, places to eat, things to do all over the state of West Virginia, and easy weekend, you know, bites. So you can pick and choose what you want to do, but we want to put those options out there. Um, my students are going to be bringing those episodes to you, but I told them that I would do a example episode. So that is what we're going to give to you today. And so I'm going to talk about Hancock and Brook counties, which are at the top of the state in the northern panhandle. They have uh, Pennsylvania on one side, the state of Ohio on the other, and they are bordered by the Ohio River. This is the part of the state that's less than an hour from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, and so it's a little different than my part of the state and other, part of the, other parts of the state, but it's unique and important just like the whole state of West Virginia. So I'm gonna start with the places to stay category. And so my first recommendation of places to stay in Hancock and Burke counties are Barn Within. It is um, a, a locally owned place that is a converted barn and a converted farmhouse uh, in Wellsburg. It is a bed and breakfast. And so you can choose to stay out at the farm or you can stay at the Sarah Miller house in downtown Wellsburg. And so they have all different kinds of, <coughs> excuse me, rooming options that are really gorgeous and you can look at them online and you can find it it's just type in barn with in i n n and it's easy to find on google and most of their rooms range between like 100 a night and 165 a night Another recommendation of somewhere to stay is Brook Hills Park, and they have two bedroom cabins that are just like brand new and gorgeous. Um, those are a little harder to find online. Um, you can look at their uh, Facebook page, but if you want to book those two room cabins, you need to call 304-737-1236 uh, to book those cabins. And if you go on their Facebook page, you can look at more pictures of those two bedroom cabins. Um, another more like primitive option is Tomlinson Run State Park, which is through the West Virginia Park System. They have camper cabins and yurts there. Uh, most of them do not have electricity or running water, but they're very reasonably priced. Like they're multi-bed, you know, places to stay for less than $90 a night. And so if you want to check those out, you can book those on the West Virginia State Parks website. Um, another option is the Grand Hotel, which is at Mountaineer Racetrack and Casino in New Cumberland. And so those rooms range from like $150 a night during the week to $200 on the weekends. And so um, if you're an adult, um, they have horse racing at uh, Mountaineer uh, on Sunday, Monday, Tuesdays, and sometimes Wednesdays of each week. So you could, you know, plan your tr trip around those days of the week and spend some time at Mountaineer Racetrack and Casino. Um, and then there are also chain hotels that are available in the Northern Panhandle as well. Uh, we try to encourage people to stay at local venues, uh, but there are chain hotels throughout both counties, including several in the city of Weirton. Um, there's also a hotel up in Chester as well. So for places to eat, <coughs> um, I kind of divided these up uh, by towns. And so um, a couple places that I would highly recommend in Wellsburg down in Brook County include Drovers Inn and Tavern, which was originally built in 1848. And they are open for dinner from Tuesday to Saturday and they offer lunch and dinner on Sundays and they have a really cool menu with like bar food and like steaks and pastas and that kind of thing. So that is supposed to be really, really good. Another place that I would recommend in Wellsburg is the Station Grill Restaurant and Tavern, which is definitely, both of these are on my to-do list. Um, Station Grill, what's really cool about it is it is in the 1877 Railroad Passenger Depot there in Wellsburg. It has been remodeled and turned into a restaurant and it's full of pictures of historic Wellsburg. So I'd really like to go check that out. 
Um, I have a couple of options in the Weirton area. Um, so one is Theo Gianni's in um, Weirton, and it's a Greek restaurant, and it is open for lunch and dinner seven days a week, and they have great rec uh, great menu, great like reviews online, and you know it's supposed to be great Greek food. Um, I contacted a couple of friends from the Weirton area because they're very. Um, they're very proud of their Italian food in Weirton, and so I wanted to get recommendations of where to go in Weirton when it came to Italian food. And so my friend said for the money, the place to go in Weirton was Mario's restaurant, which is on Main Street, and she said it's really good for the money. And then if you want to have a more upscale Italian restaurant experience, go to La Cucina Italian Grill, which is up like in Weirton Heights as you're kind of headed out of town. Um, another option, because you are in the Ohio Valley, is you definitely need to try De Carlos. So if you're not headed further south to like Wheeling and you want to try and have the De Carlos experience, there is a De Carlos in Weirton where you can go try Ohio Valley pizza. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I have a separate video about the Carlos um, here on this channel. Um, it is unlike any other pizza I've ever eaten in my life. Um, another couple places I'm gonna recommend further up the river um, in Chester include Connie's Corner. Um, Connie's Corner is beloved by um, Fiesta people. Um, that's where they, that's like their go-to place when they go to visit Fiesta. And so Connie's Corner is in Chester. Uh, it's open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. seven days a week. Uh, their breakfast is on point. And the best part is all of their food is served on Fiesta that is made in the factory, literally like right down the street. So I love Connie's Corner. I will be going back to Connie's Corner every time I go to the factory, which is um, a lot. Um, and then I also would recommend checking out Frank's Pastry Shop in Chester as well. It's super cute, super adorable. Um, and that is, you know, it's a it's a go-to for people that are in Chester. So things to see or do. I've already alluded to what I think is the most important thing to see or do in uh, Brook and Hancock counties, and that would be to visit the Fiesta table of, Tableware Factory and Outlet, or as dish heads call it, Mecca. Um, I have been to Mecca many times, and I will continue to go to Mecca many times more in the future. And so that's why I kind of volunteered to do this episode because I love going to Hancock County um, and going to Fiesta Ware. So the Fiesta Ware factory and outlet, like two things you need to know. One is like the outlet is open every day. So, and it's huge. So plan if you're going and you're a dish collector, like you need to have space in your trunk or in your back seat for what you're bringing home in boxes. Uh, Cause they'll wrap everything up and put it in boxes. Um, and if you're really like super wanting to build a collection, you should plan your trip around a tent sale because tent sale prices are way cheaper than even just regular factory outlet prices. Um, but you never know what you're gonna get. Like you can't go to the factory and say, oh, I'm gonna get this, this, and this. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. Maybe you'll find something that you like never thought you were gonna buy. Like the last time we were at the factory, the decals were 65% off and I ended up buying a whole bunch of fall plates, adding to my Americana collection. Um, I bought new Christmas plates that I had not planned on buying at all, but they were 65% off. So I told my husband it was like they were given away for free. So, you know, I had to bring them home with me. So um, go plan to spend time. They're really cool. Like they have carts and things. Um, and they, they're really great about helping you like get to the car and stuff. Um, but if you're into Fiesta or you want to get into Fiesta, the best way to do that is by going to uh, the Fiesta Wear Table Factory Outlet. So another thing that you can do, but you'd need to call ahead of time and check on this, is you can take factory tours. Um, I always seem to be up there like on a Sunday when they're not doing factory tours, but if you go during the week, you can do factory tours. The last time we were up there, they were like, 
in lockdown because they were making the new color and they didn't want anybody to see it so they were not doing factory tours but i think they do them twice a day it's like 10 in the morning and then two in the afternoon so you could call ahead and get yourself on the factory tour and the cool part factory tours are totally free um and so that is on my to-do list like i want to do a factory tour really really bad um because you know it's may handmade start to finish in west virginia it is actually the only tableware uh manufactured from start to finish in the united states today when there used to be all kinds of potteries here in west virginia but fiesta is the last one um other things i would recommend to see and do include the weirton area museum and cultural center which tells uh the beautiful history of Weirton, especially with Weirton Steel coming in and like how that community is so um, ethnically diverse, you know, it tells about all the different people that came, whether they were, you know, from Greece or they were from Serbia or they were from Italy or they were from Poland. Uh, there are going to be all kinds of different nationalities who moved to the Northern Panhandle for work. Um, another recommendation is Tomlinson Run State Park. I already mentioned they have the cabins and the yurts, but they also offer hiking, fishing, boating, and swimming. And if you are a person that wants to go to all the Almost Heaven Swings, which are all over the state, um, one of the Almost Heaven Swings is located there at Tomlinson Run. Um, another thing that is not to be missed is the teapot in Chester. Uh, the Chester teapot is the largest teapot in the world and so um, it's made of a gigantic root beer barrel and it's 14 feet tall and 14 feet wide and it's huge and it's been in chester since 1939. um there's like no parking right at the teapot so you're gonna have to park across the road and like run across the road uh, like i have um but the teapot is super cool it's super iconic it is you know just like Northern Panhandle history. Another place I recommend is down in Brook County. It's called Brook Hills Park. Um, they offer regular golf, mini golf, disc golf. They have paddle boats. They have a swimming pool. They have camping. They have those cabins that I mentioned. So they, they have all kinds of neat activities for your family there. Um, another place I would highly recommend in Brook County is to drive over to Bethany to see Bethany College. Bethany College is gorgeous. Bethany College is also the oldest college in West Virginia. It is so old that it was established when it was still Virginia. Like Virginia, the legislature of Virginia gave Bethany permission to form in 1840. Um, little history about that. Uh, the founder of Bethany is Alexander Campbell. He is going to found the Disciples of Christ Church. And so Bethany is a Disciples of Christ school, like affiliated with the Disciples of Christ to this day. And so he is just a really interesting character. He was um, you know, not only a religious leader, but it was also involved in politics. His family was also involved in politics and the statehood movement. So not only can you go like see the college, um, but you can call ahead if you look online and they offer tours of Alexander Campbell's mansion there in Bethany. So that is on my to-do list as well because um, I think Alexander Campbell is truly such an interesting character, you know, and when you look at like the Second Great Awakening and all of these, you know, denominations of Christianity blooming all across the country, like Alexander Campbell, you know, he, he was quite successful in sharing his vision for Christianity. Um, another place I recommend stopping is the Peter Tar Furnace. And so the Peter Tar Furnace was the very first iron furnace to be built west of the Allegheny Mountains. And it was built in the 1790s, just right outside of what is now Weirton. It's on Kings Creek, which is a tributary of the Ohio River. And so folklore goes that the iron cannonballs that were used by Oliver Hazard Perry during the Battle of Lake Erie during the War of 1812 were actually manufactured in Peter Tarr's furnace. So the furnace is still there. It's not an operation, but it's a very important historic site. You know, as we look at things west of the mountains, 
um, that's part of that legacy. Um, another place I recommend is Prime 304. Um, it is a super cute bookshop and dessert shop. They have like ice cream, all kinds of flavors in Weirton, West Virginia. And so I love a good bookshop. I love shopping. So that is somewhere that definitely needs to be mentioned. Um, and I can't stress enough, you can't forget about the fact that these are Ohio River counties. And so you can't forget about the bridges. Um, in particular, my favorite bridge in this area um, is what I call the New Newell Toll Bridge, which goes between Newell and East Liverpool, Ohio, um, which was built by the Homer Lachlan Pottery Company when they moved from East Liverpool over to West Virginia. And so that bridge has been in operation daily since 1905. Um, it's kind of like old school, you know, one car goes across it at a time and it's like a metal great bridge and you can see through to the bottom, but it is super cool bridge. Like when you think about the fact that it's been open and you know, in operation since 1905, that's really cool. Um, I also recommend when you're in Weirton, you'll probably go across this bridge, but the Veterans Memorial Bridge there in Weirton is fabulous. It kind of looks like the Guy and Dot Bridge down in Huntington. Um, but it goes across from Weirton uh, to Steubenville, Ohio. So I can't stress enough, you can't forget about the bridges. The bridges are, you know, an iconic part about being in Hancock and Burke counties. Um, the last thing I'm gonna go over is some uh, events that happen up in Burke and Hancock counties. Um, of course, I cannot stress enough, uh, Fiesta tent sales. These don't happen, you know, all the time. They're they're usually like one long weekend, um, like every other month, and you have to follow online to see when those tent sales are going to happen. Usually, there's a big one like in in June in in Newell, and then there's another one like in October, and you know you have to park and you have to stand in line and they only let so many people in the tents at any given time. But like a tent sale is fabulous to experience. So if you're really wanting to start a Fiesta collection, that's the way to go. They also have indoor tent sales throughout the year. So if you're following online, um, you'll know when those tent sales are happening. Another thing I would mention is the city of Weirton has a free concert series every Friday night during the summers. So you can find that information on the city of Weirton page. You can also find it on the convention bureau's page. So, you know, you can't beat free. And so every Friday night, there's like a free concert in the city of Weirton. Um, another thing I would mention, this is something I really wanna do, is um, there's a large Greek community in Weirton. And so every uh, July, they have the Weirton Greek Festival and it's with the local churches and local Greek community. And from what I understand, it's like some of the best Greek eating that you will ever do. Um, because this is, you know, what people have passed down as recipes, you know, from their ancestors who came from Greece to the Northern Panhandle. Another uh, event I would highly recommend would be the Brook County Fair, which takes place in September. It's a three-day event, and so it has all the you know typical fair trappings of the carnival and livestock activities and that sort of thing. And then another event I would mention in Brook County would be the Wellsburg Apple Fest, and this happens on the first weekend of October every year. And um, you know, West Virginia, we love our apples, especially. You know those ones grown over in the eastern panhandle and those historic art orchards but you can't forget the importance of brook county when it comes to apples the, the brook county is home of the first grimes golden apple which was a very important heritage apple species and so that's what they're celebrating in wellsburg is that history of the grimes golden apple um in Brook County. And then another thing I would recommend, you know, later in the year is Fallensby offers a Christmas in the Park event where you can go do shopping for Christmas and Weirton also has Christmas on Main Street. 
If you're planning a trip to Hancock and Brooke counties, I cannot stress enough the top of West Virginia Convention and Visitors Bureau, uh, which is located in Weirton, they have a fabulous website. And so you can look on the website for things to do, things to see, places to stay, etc. They also have like a blog feature with stories. And so you can learn a lot about Hancock and Brooke counties um, just from reading those stories. And so I hope that you'll consider taking a trip to Hancock and Brooke counties um, in the future and, you know, having a great West Virginia weekend road trip. And don't forget to stop at Fiesta and, you know, bring home some of the, you know, wares that are made in the Northern Panhandle. So thanks for joining me and I hope that you will enjoy the future episodes of West Virginia weekend road trips uh, that will be coming up. Uh, presented by my students. Thanks y'all for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to West Virginia History with Mrs. B on both Facebook and YouTube.